Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and this week we're picking up just after our video last week, so check that out here if you haven't already. Uh, and we're talking about a couple things that I see that uh, folks need to do before you sequence your show. Before you sequence, what do you do? And in fact, some of these steps are even going to come in a little bit earlier than that. And today I want to talk about submodels. Submodels don't have to be scary they can be very helpful. Okay, let's talk about it. So in our last video, as I mentioned, we talked about groups and groups are really powerful because you can take, you know, multiple items in X lights, like all my roof line pixels, all my snowflakes, my trees, my matrices, my vertical lines here. And you can bring those individual models into groups. And then in the sequencer in X lights, then you'll sequence within that group. Okay, really powerful, speeds you up incredibly. Okay, um, and it seems like X Lights 101, but if you're new to this, um, this is something that might not be immediately obvious. Well, the flip side to groups, kind of the other way to look at it, and the other thing we can do are called submodels. What's a submodel? A submodel is when you take any of your models, any of your items in your show, your models, okay, not a group, but actually a model, like here I've got these peace stakes. I might not use them this year, actually, because nothing against David Peace, mine didn't turn out that great. <laughs> but, uh, but you have these models, okay, like this one is a matrix, but it's made up of all these individual little sticks, right? What if I wanted to break it up? and put the individual parts of this or different segments of this model into groups separately. That way I could do an effect, say on the left half, the right half, every other, et cetera, et cetera. And it would actually be really quick and easy instead of having to select all of these different parts. How would I do that? Well, a sub model is your answer. So all we do to make a sub model, I'll show you here, is we just right click and we press on, da, 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 da. Sorry, we don't right click. I apologize, it's right here in the tab below. What am I thinking? It's too early, let's drink some more coffee. Um, we go right here to sub models and then click to edit. We click the dot, 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 um, the ellipsis that would be. And now we have the ability to set up sub models, which are basically their own models, but they're within the model we already created, okay? So let's go ahead and add a first sub model. Okay. Uh, first thing it's going to show us is a name here. So we can name it here at the top. And so we could just go uh, maybe horizontal one. I don't know. Uh, because this is a vertical matrix of lights, we could talk about the horizontal nodes. Okay. And we see a preview here on the side as well. Uh, making this big really does help. And then here's where you can select your individual lights. So it says node ranges. Okay. So node ranges here allows you to define which lights you're working with. So one, two, three, four, five. So basically one, six. So it would be like one, six, 11. And as you can see, as I type that, I totally did that wrong. Um, it actually highlights what nodes you've got going on. So it's actually not one, six, 11. It's, uh, well, that's weird. It's upside down from how I thought it was. Oh yeah, I remember how this is actually, I did start at the top of the six. So it would now be five, 10, 15. Is that right? Nope, still not right. Hey, we'll learn here. Five, nine, five, 11. Boy, what did I do for this thing? It did work, it really did. <laughs> oh, you know what? I zigzagged, didn't I? Five, so it's five, six, and then it's like 11 or... 12. Anyways, this isn't working all that well. 5, 6, 15, 16, etc. So to illustrate the point, I'm not going to go through and do this because it's, it's fairly slow. Um, you can also go draw a model, which helps a lot just to go in here, select what you want. That's actually the much quicker way. It selects and deselects. So you got to be careful but I can go select none, I can draw this out. Boom, sub model, okay? There's one, two. Truth be told, I don't make a ton of sub models myself. Um, this has been a big part of this year as well. So then I could do like a horizontal two, 
Draw model. Boom. Okay. Horizontal two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, basically this allows you then to press OK. And now you have sub models. So they're going to show up um, underneath this model. Okay. So now there's a little submarine. It took me for a while to figure out initially uh, when I was starting what that is, but it's a submarine for sub model. And so now I can select those. It shows them to me in yellow here. And now I can work with those sub models. So now I can take those and I can add those to a group. So I can go to a group like we did in the last video. You want to create those first. Um, I know I didn't walk through every step, but you just um, select lights, create a group. Um, you come down to the bottom here and I can find those sub models. And um, it's going to show you only the things that aren't already in the group. So I find piece stakes, horizontal one, two. I could add those into this group. Done. So sub models and groups work together um, and they really can allow you to do a lot of stuff. Now, the real power in sub models, like what I showed you, is fairly slow to figure that out. But the really great thing is when you do have a model, let's see if there's any subs on these. There are. But say you download a model, a, a, a really um, a really complex model, and I'm not going to do it right here just for the sake of time, but you grab like the Gilbert Engineering, like the Rosa Wreath is really, um, it's really popular. Let's just grab it and see if it has any sub models in here. I'm honestly not sure. Um, so we'll go in here, go to da 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 da, Gilbert, and then it's, uh, is it Christmas? Go to R. It is not in Christmas. High density. Oh, yeah. These are the ones. Okay. So say I do like the Rosa wreath. I insert it. It showed up here. Boom. There it is. And so now we can go in here and we can look at submodels. And we see that built into this model that we downloaded are all these different submodels that I can then use in my sequences and sequences that I've purchased may use them as well. So some models are a thing you define yourself for, you know, models that you create, like, um, let me just delete this, like matrices and like windows and stuff like that, right? That Those are models you create and you may create some models for those, but for Coro props, things you download, uh, you're going to go ahead and and anything that's high density or that's got a lot of different options, there's going to be sub models probably already created or your sequence vendor, like I know PPD does this, they actually go in and create their own sub models and allow you to download those models, bring them into x -Lights and use them. So if this got your wheels turning, if this got you thinking, okay, how could I use this in my display? And you're looking for a little more help, uh, come check out Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. We open uh, periodically. We'll be opening again soon for the season. If you have questions, you need support, we help you out there. Go check it out here at this link. If not, hey, subscribe, check out our other videos, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks.